change on some cabinet lines these attributes here. If you change here, it is not going to change your pricing structure. There's not going to be an upcharge. There's no way of it knowing that you've changed something. So if your cabinet company allows you to make size modifications, and most of them these days do, do not do it from here. In fact, if your cabinet company allows you to make size modifications, most likely you're going to have a tag down here that says um, auto control and these are going to be grayed out and you won't even be able to access them without unclicking the little check mark in front of auto control. If you have that, it's just another warning. Don't try to change it from here. Use the modifications. So sample catalog tells you where it comes from, tells you what the description is. If you need to change the plan notation for some reason instead of having wall 3321, you can type that in here. Shows you the amount of doors and drawers. You won't ever mess with those. Add to BOM. This is going to add to your bill of materials. Uh, really handy for um, doing remodels and stuff where there may be cabinets in the design that you're not selling them. So you can uncheck the add to BOM and then they don't come up in your pricing. You can add a note down here if you'd like. Um, again, over here, holding down your right mouse button, you can play with the angle and size of your cap, not size, but the picture of your cabinet. You can also use the navigation controls here for this. We've got close and open. As you slide across there, you can open and close the doors. Now this is not going to work in all catalogs. It works in sample catalogs and a handful of other catalogs. Um, some manufacturers chose not to have the open-close door feature. So if you go and use your open-close and nothing happens, then it's not available for your um, catalog line. The other way you can use open-close is by doing a single click in the plan. Open-close, open-close. A double click takes me over to the uh, black and white line viewing. And then a double click takes me back to here. Single click open and close. Modification tab is next. In our modification tab, there's lots of modifications through here that you can add. You may have more, you may have less, depending on your cabinet line. They may say the same thing, but chances are they're going to be worded a little bit differently. We try to word them so that they match the wording in your catalogs and stuff, just so you're not having to learn something new. What I want to do is I want to change the size of this. I want to change the depth of it because remember I raised it so now I want to change the depth a little bit. So I'm going to click on change depth and I'm going to choose the depth that I want. I want it 15 inches deep and the key to this is clicking the add button here once you choose your depth or any other mod. If you come down, if you just highlight it here and come down and click OK, it's not in this box so when you get around to drawing a 3D you're going to look at that cabinet and go, wait a minute, what happened to my modifications? I know I modified it. Forgot to click add. I do it all the time. That's the only mod I want in this one. But I'm going to come take a look at our knobs now. We have the option of using knob or not. We can do it top, center, or bottom. Now you'll notice it's only changing one door here. You can do it left, right, or center. The reason it's only changing one door is because that's the one that's highlighted. I can click on the other door and now I can change the knob over there to however I want it. How about centered on the top? And there's one more thing I want to do. Remember I told you I could change the plan notation here? I want to change the plan notation because I changed the depth of that cabinet. Yeah, it should look something like that. And I'm going to click OK. Here's my wall. I want to in out just a little bit because when it changes the depth of the cabinet, it changes it from the center of the cabinet. I want to do this guy too. I want to do attributes. And in this case, I'm going to do a size mod. And I'm going to change the depth. Change the depth. I'm going to make it 15 inches deep as well. I'm going to click OK so it adds it. I'm going to come back in here and I want to do a door modification as well. I want to do a door insert and I'm going to choose decorative glass and number 45 looks good to me. Hat C. See where my mouse is? See, I'm trying to click OK without hitting Add. We would have had a little surprise when we got over to our 
3D views because I would have not had glass. And I would have been asking you what happened with my modification. So there I've added it. I'm going to click OK. I didn't change the depth on this one. I'll let you guys do that. I already showed you how. So, Okay, so here's my basic kitchen. Next thing up, we need countertops, right? Right? Yeah, let's take a look at it in 3D first. Generate a quick 3D rendering. See, this is why we look at things in 3D. I got a cabinet I forgot to delete. It's my nice glass doors. Now you'll notice as I rotate around here, keep an eye on this wall right here. Keep an eye on this wall. As I rotate around, it disappears. Now keep an eye on this wall and this wall if you can do two things at once. They're both gone. And as I come around and as this one goes out of view, it snaps back into place. As my little stubby wall over here, let's do this. Let's zoom out a little bit. Move up. As my little stubby wall comes into, zoo, into view, it goes away. And as my big wall goes out of view, it snaps back into place. And same thing with my stubby view. Just kind of a cool little feature there. Really lets you see through the walls. Um, if you zoom around through here and you get like this, and you you know you really need this picture, but all this is in the way. We've got this fun little reef, not refined. Hide invisible walls. Get the right one, and there it takes those walls right out for you. Click it again, put them back in. Okay, so there's our 3D. Get over here and get rid of this dude. All I'm doing to do, to get rid of this is I'm going to do a single left click, delete on my keyboard. She's gone. Here's comes my first countertop. There we go. Here's my first countertop in place. I can right click on my countertop and I've got all the features drag, move, rotate, in, out, up, down, copy, delete, edit, and attributes. We're going to go to edit. If I do a single left click on a line, if I do a single left click on a line, it'll drag that line in and out for me. Snap it back into place here. If I do a right click on the line, it's going to bring up a menu. I'm not going to go through all these items in the menu because I have a um, countertop tutorial that does that for me. Same thing with the point. If I left click on a point, I can move it and get it back in place. And that's the problem with moving points sometimes. It's hard to get them just right back. There we go. If I right click on the point, it brings up a menu. I can um, bevel. I'll put a little bevel on this corner so you can bevel. Whew, you can get big if you want to. We don't want to come back out here. There we go. A little bevel in my corner. My mouse is still a crosshair. Tells me that there's a function in this case because you can see my countertop's red. My countertop fu edit function is open. To get out of this, you can hit escape on your keyboard or we can come up here and we can click on, find the icon, the little uh, select icon up here. And we're done with that. Time for some crown molding. So remember we set up our crown moldings and stuff in our um, yeah design settings or yeah design settings. We can do our backsplash single click puts in our backsplash molding single click put in our toe kick you see our toe kick line here and our crown molding. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete a couple of these crown moldings because I want to do something a little different a little more fun to delete the crown whoops not my there we go I guess I just killed the toe kick so I better put that back in there now I can delete the crown again there we go okay so you can see the red from our backsplash coming across there you can see my crown molding on these guys and my toe kick in here now I'm going to place a different molding in here so to place a, a molding manually I'm just going to choose moldings choose top moldings select my molding. I'm going to do this guy with a little insert. So I'm going to show you how to insert into that molding. Drop it in place. I'm just dragging and dropping these just like you would a cabinet, only I'm dropping it on the cabinet that I want it placed on. There we go. There's my new crown. I'm going to put an insert in there so I'm going to grab the dental. And I know a lot of you designers out there who have used other softwares are saying, Paul, don't bother. It's not going to be in the right place. It's going to look dumb. You either have to put it underneath or you have to put it on top. 
Yeah, no. I don't. Take a quick look if you can zoom in there, if you can zoom your eagle eyes in there and see this. You'll notice that my line is right square in the middle of my crown. And when we take a 3D of this, if we zoom in, you'll see it's actually in the right place in the crown molding. I'm just going to drop it right on the cabinet because it's easier. But you can actually come out and you can drop it out here right on the crown and it'll put it in too. But why limit yourself to such a small space when you can drop it in a 12 inch spot there? Okay, so my design is basically done. There's a couple more things we need to do. I mean, we've got our design, but we still haven't done all everything. So here's my crown molding right there with the dental in it, just right in the middle where it's supposed to be. See, it's right square in the middle, right in that spot. Here's my countertop, my flooring. All right, we're going to close this guy. We need a bar top on this guy. So to do bar tops, I'm going to use um, an architectural element called a floor user shape. Now there's several ways to access this. We can come in here in our catalog drop down. I can go to architectural elements, user shapes, floor user shape, wall user shape. The difference between these two guys are the wall user shape is designed to fit specifically on a wall. You cannot place it anywhere but on a wall. It will be a maximum or it will be a minimum, a maximum. It will only be half inch deep. You cannot change the depth. You can change the height and you can change the length. Floor user shape, it's going to place on the floor. You can change the width, the height, the depth on this guy. So you can pretty much modify it to be anything. You, we can make it a round column. You can make it a square pillar. You can make it a beam in the ceiling. Doesn't matter. You can pretty much, you can make